Welcome back to Go Gaddis Real Estate Radio right here on AM 920 The Answer. In this segment, in our neighborhood spotlight, which is one of my favorite segments, we're featuring Water's Edge, which is in Stone Mountain. Also, do we have a housing, a, an A, housing affordability crisis in the U.S.? And then how is earnest money typically handled when a purchase agreement is terminated? Got those subjects for you in this segment. Go Gaddis Real Estate Radio was created to help homeowners and potential home buyers understand all of the things they needed to know, all of the research they needed to do in order to make decisions that were best overall uh, for the current time, over the future, uh, for homeowners and uh, sellers and home buyers. If you want to communicate with us, if you want to, we'd love to be your friend. And you can do that by going to GoGaddis Radio, G O G A D D I S Radio.com. You can ask questions on air, ask questions that we answer off air. You can make comments about a show, about a guest, about whatever it is. You can, you know, share your ideas on things that we have discussed. We've discussed a lot of kind of deep things on today's show, and you might have some comments on one or more of those. And we invite you to go to GoGaddisRadio.com to do that. You can also. Request we do some additional research on your neighborhood to include it in our neighborhood spotlight. A lot of our listeners seem to love those, especially when we get a neighborhood that's in their area. If you've never heard us do your neighborhood or feature your neighborhood, go GoGaddisRadio.com. You can actually click on a link that will allow you to give us information on your neighborhood, and we will, no matter what, we will feature your neighborhood on an upcoming show. Remember, sometimes it takes us a month or two to get to them because we already have other neighborhoods in the queue, but we'll get to it for sure. And that's gogaddisradio.com is how you get to all that. In this week's show, and for those of you who know, we pick one specific metro Atlanta neighborhood every week. We don't do it every single week, but probably 45 weeks a year to feature one neighborhood to help you, based on trends over the last three years, understand where you as a homeowner in the neighborhood would be at an advantage or disadvantage when it comes to selling your property. And it's amazing, just from that one little segment, you can typically figure out how much pressure you have, how much flexibility you have in pushing the price up, or you have to be more conservative pricing-wise. This week, we're featuring Water's Edge, which is in Stone Mountain. If you uh, are on I-20 going east, you go to exit 75, which is Turner Hill Road. You go left toward US 278 or Georgia 124. You continue on 124 to Rockbridge Road, and you go left. You turn right on to North Deshong Road, and the neighborhood is on the right. Water's Edge is, again, a neighborhood in Stone Mountain, Georgia. The community mostly features large homes that are very reasonably reasonably priced, which we will see in just a second. It is a well-established community that continues to attract interest from buyers looking in the Stone Mountain area. The neighborhood includes Lakeside, Dockside, the Reserve, Harbor Point, Forest Cove, and the Hills, the names of the little subsections of the neighborhood has good access to I-285 and US-78. Water's Edge boasts lots of resort-like amenities, 140-acre community lake with a boat dock and a ramp, lakefront fitness center, walking trails, two pools, pickleball, and tennis and basketball courts. Also a clubhouse, a social center, a gazebo. That sounds nice. Four playgrounds and putting greens. Up, oh, I'm in. Putting greens, I'm in. If the community doesn't offer enough to keep you busy... It is only 10 minutes for, to Yellow, Yellow River Wildlife Sanctuary with wildlife encounters for the family, everything from alpacas to z- zebras, and 15 minutes to Stone Mountain Park with its history, its hiking, seasonal events, and camping. I haven't been out to, out to one of the laser shows in years. I assume they still do it. I probably need to do that this year during Christmas time. Let's take a look at what's happened in the neighborhood over the last three years. Help you figure out as a homeowner in the neighborhood, do you have an advantage? Do you have a disadvantage? If you're going to sell, should you sell it quickly because the market's getting, whatever it is. Now, this neighborhood is huge. A thousand homes in the neighborhood, plus or minus a thousand homes. In 2022, there were 41 homes sold in the neighborhood. They took 24 days on average to sell. Average sales price was $369,000. In 2023, the average sales price increased $6,000 when 30 homes sold, and they took 59 days on the market. Now, that's a big jump. 2022, 24 days. 2023, 59 days. That's a big deal. But let's look at this year, year to date. Sales price has increased another $32,000 to $407,404. And uh, there were 24 homes that sold in an average of 45 days each. 
There are currently 11 homes on the market, currently for sale. There have been 30 homes sold in the last 365 days, which means you have 4.4 months worth of inventory. It it's, can seem like an, a difficult concept, but let me just explain months on, of supply. And it says that in this particular neighborhood, if no new listings came on the market, so just the 11 listings stayed on the market, how long would it take for all of those to sell, sell based on what's happened in the prior 12 months? And in this case, it's 4.4 months. If you remember, four and five months, we consider a balanced market. So that would be at the lower end of a balanced market, meaning slightly more oriented to the seller than the buyer. If you have uh, less than four months worth of inventory, we consider that a seller's market. The lower you get, like at one time in the Atlanta market in 2020 and 2021, we had two weeks, not two months, two weeks worth of inventory. That is a screaming seller's market. 3.5 weeks, not a screaming seller's market, but still a seller's market. So 4.4 months worth of inventory. If you go over five months worth of inventory, it's called a buyer's market. Listen to this. 2012, at the very end of the recession, the average home in the neighborhood sold for $110,058. Today, the average home sold for $407,404, which means homeowners in the neighborhood have increased equity in their home almost $300 million. I do receive comments from people over time saying, I don't know why you have to all talk about rich people and making all the money. And the reality is that's not what I'm doing at all. Uh, I, am, I am celebrating the additional hopefully financial security that every homeowner in Water's Edge has now compared to, you know, last year, or last month, or, you know, 2012, like we just talked about. Normally, the equity in a home is probably the single largest asset for a um, a homeowner in the in the United States, and I think that is really really cool. I want to mention quickly that uh, listing services work differently in Metro Atlanta because there are two different listing services. You're probably saying what? I mean, if you listen to this show, you've heard it before, but you might not have heard it if you don't regularly listen to the show. And um, so, because there's two listing services, websites pull from one or the other. Typically, some of them will pull from both, but I think we're one of the few that actually pulls listing from both listing services. So if you use Sure, S-U-R-E-M-L-S dot com, S-U-R-E-M-L-S dot com, then you will be way more likely to find the listing that you're looking for. Can you imagine learning in November that after you've been searching September and October and never find what you're looking for, that you were looking on a website that did not pull listings from both listing services? I mean, I, honestly, I would feel kind of stupid and I, I don't don't mean to call myself or anybody else stupid but I can't think of a better word for it or I would be I would think I was lazy didn't do all the research that I needed to do so it's sure mls.com s-u-r-e mls.com let's talk a minute about home affordability and that just means the average consumer of real estate's ability to purchase the average sales price home in their area Carl Harris, who's the chairman of the National Association of Home Builders, so somewhat biased, so we have to take what they're saying with a grain of salt, believes that housing affordability should be the number one priority this election season. While the economy, immigration, and abortion continue to grab major headlines, politicians should understand the biggest concern for most Americans in this election season is that housing affordability does not exist. Housing is by far the largest single expense for American households, and rising costs are putting the nation in a really an untenable situation. A 2024 report by Harvard's Joint Center for Housing Studies found a record high. 22.4 million households are paying more than 30% of their income on rent. And among these renters, more than 12 million are paying more than half. Think about that. More than half of their income on housing, a newly released housing affordability index by the National Association of Home Builders, NAHB, shows that in the first quarter of 2024, 38% of a typical family's income was needed to make a mortgage payment on a median price new single family home. And remember, median is not the average sales price, median is the middle from the highest transaction to the lowest transaction to the one in the middle. So the reality is, is that more than 38% might have problem purchasing the average price home in an area. And this totally affects low 
income households, which would have to spend up to 77% of their earnings. I am, just from a personal opinion, I'm more concerned about the the elderly, and I'm concerned about the generation that is coming into the housing market or wants to come into the housing market because they have way, way less options than we did when we were that age. And when you can't get out and get on your own, then life kind of slows down a little bit. You're not moving forward on the things that you know you need to. We had a question about earnest money, and this is from Michelle in Coweta County. Hello, Coweta County. Uh, she wants to know exactly what is earnest money and if the sale of a home is terminated, what happens to it and how long before it has to be returned and to whom. And um, earnest money is the money a buyer pays to a seller. I mean, I guess the seller could pay it to a buyer technically, but I've never seen that happen. To show the seller that they're acting in good faith. And here's the money that if I don't do right, I can lose to you. So it's designed to show that a buyer is acting in earnest. It's generally... 1% of the sales price, there are no specific rules. I mean, it could be 50000 on a sale or it could be 5000 And when you close, then that money goes toward your purchase price. Now, what Michelle wants to know is what happens if the sale of a home is terminated. Well, if it's terminated by a seller and the seller doesn't really have the right to terminate it, then the buyer is going to get the earnest money back. If it is terminated and the buyer does not have the authority to terminate unilaterally, so they just decide they don't want to buy it or all the other... Um, contingency periods have expired and then it gets terminated, then the sell, then the buy, the, excuse me, the seller would get the earnest money. And you don't really have to question who's getting it because there's an official agreement that is entered into by the parties that shows who's getting the earnest money, uh, what is the amount of it, and it typically is returned. You know, the agreement's typically put in place within a week to 14 days and then the, the money would be a ter- returned almost immediately. Michelle, if you have any additional questions or I didn't answer yours clearly enough, 770-497-0000 is the number to call. I appreciate each and every one of you for joining us for another week's edition of Go Get Us Real Estate Radio. I've got plans to be back here same time, same day, same channel next week, and I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great week, Atlanta.